Welcome to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel and the football show with me, Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Tam McManus and Tam Kerry. It's very rare we get the two Tams on the yes. show, uh, Ruffy, which is a bonus today. Yeah, and at a normal price as well, when I thought the two of them would have tried to bump us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, great to have Tam back. Did you have a good break in the summertime? It was brilliant. I am um, Lake District and uh, a wee bit of North Wales as well. And then making memories, as they say, making memories, you know, building sandcastles with my granny. And then uh, my wife saying, put her back in the arm, we'll need to go to it. <laughs> 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 that was great. But hey, the highlight, I know you've already, have, you must have covered it numerous times in the, the short few days that you've been back, but well done to Ruffy. We were all guessing uh, last year, June the 2nd, June the 2nd. Did you have a Scooby? Yes. I'd, I'd to add it into two things. I thought the very fact he was 70 last year, I mind he was getting dead modelling. Yeah, a lot of his thinking. old pals, a lot of his old ex teammates, a lot of his old ex birds, mothers. Were, <laughs> <laughs> they, were all, they were all passing away and stuff like that, and he was getting a wee bit doing the chops. And so when he says June the 2nd, when we were out at the, the PFA dinner, yeah, you were right. doing, put it in your diary. Right, and I thought, right, I thought, I thought he was going to say to me, I'm, I'm quitting, no, because he's committed to us five days a week, you know, yeah. I know he doesn't contribute much, but it's still, <laughs> it's still going to be here every day, you know, but I thought, it's either that he's going to quit everything, yeah. or I thought, he's, he's got a wee, a wee gong coming his way yeah. from <clears throat> Buckhouse, and I was right. Yeah, absolutely, only one, uh, uh, Anne, our producer, uh, actually nailed it right away, um, she thought, it was it was something like that, but I didn't see it coming. I, I mean, obviously, since you were on that doom and gloom, I thought I feared the worst for the big man, you know, because he's obviously feeling as if he's get he's getting to seventy. He's the fittest seventy year old I've ever seen, but still, um, the plaudits for you has been magnificent, Ruffy, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been great. You know, it's obviously had a good career, fifty years in total. So, uh, in football, that is. So, yeah. It's just, say, it, it'd been a, I'm no man to make you blush here, but it'd been a knighthood if he was English. Simple as that. If you'd been an English goalkeeper who'd been at three World Cups yeah. and was revered in your native land, did it'd God, been a knighthood. Did, did Gordon Banks get a knighthood? Yeah. Did he? Did he yeah. Sir Gordon Banks, did he? Yeah. Did I think he did, I think. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <Have you marked? laughs> I'll tell you, I can't can believe it. I know she's listening, Anne, our lovely producer. Yeah. I can't believe she's not a, a, a gong when you think about she spent in Embassy Regal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, that was a good thing, but I think Tom makes a good point, Ruffy. I think eventually, you know, 10 years, 20 years from now, when you eventually um, head up to that goalkeeper's place <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> Although, knowing you as I do, I think you may as well look see it all you off may well, you may as well looking down the way. I think we should just get you stuffed. Thanks, so. <laughs> Just sit you in the corner. Just, corner. just, 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 just to get the stuff oh. on and, and keep you here. Where are you going to put them? You've got to keep just, just the voice. No, I'm just saying a placard. Yeah. Six foot. Sort of a, yeah, right. well, you're going to be with us anyway, Ruffy. We, we absolutely love the <laughs> fight. Good this, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And that's today's competition. <laughs> How long is Ruffy got? <laughs> anyway, apart from anything else, there's lots to talk about. I don't want to dwell too much on Sligo Rovers against Motherwell Town because obviously our show goes out live now and quite a lot of people um, yeah, across, yeah, uh, yeah. in fact, not only in the UK, but, you know, I'm ex, kicking myself, though. Take, take away the foot beside, I'm kicking myself. I've seen uh, a few pictures, a couple of videos uh, that model fans out there. it's only it's basically the young team and then a few others because we only get 300 tickets yeah uh, I, I was I, I, score line uh, notwithstanding I, 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 I wasn't going to go for a ticket anyway I was getting gallus alice when I saw the draw hanging at me and the boys that I sat with will wait for uh, hopefully Czech Republic or Norway uh, I don't think I've been to either country but um, oh alarm bells were ringing last week we were we were really really poor and it was as I say it was shades of uh, a, a last season in a lot of the really, really poor games we watched. So uh, I'm slightly fearful tonight, although I have predicted that we'll win it 2-0 yeah. and get through to the next round. Maybe, I, I can't see the old thing, I, I wonder if the Sligo boys, who were really good, their goalkeeper was immense. Did you see the game, Tom? Yeah, I watched Their goalie was immense and had a big centre-half. Apologies, don't even know the boy's name, but he never missed anything there the whole night in that we could hit them with. What about Mugabe? Are you a, are you a fan of him overall? Bomb scare. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. That's the thing, but a lot, a lot of bomb scare players. You know, Effie Ambrose was a was a was one of these guys that, that kind of endeared themselves to supporters. Not Hibs fans loved him for a while he was there. You know, yeah. But there are some players that you know because if you asked any Mugabe fan, you know, tell us two things. 
that Bevis Mugabe has done. They'll say, well, he was woefully short with that header against Sligo for an embarrassing 1-0 defeat. And last season, he got sent off in 45 seconds against Hibs in the Cup, yeah. which just killed the tie. Uh, you know, so that's why, I mean, it could turn that around tonight, you know, a couple of corners come in and he gets two goals, that would be magic, yeah. and all will be forgiven. Well, uh, uh, certainly I, I want Mother to get through because I think it would be uh, an embarrassment again for our country, Ruffy, uh, when we're looking at the clubs out with Rangers and Celtic. Um, just not being able to get to group stage, albeit we do know that Hearts are going to be in the Conference League group stage. Yeah, I think it's important that they do get through. You know, I think the encouraging point, I think Tam touched on it there, their goalkeeper had a good game. So that means you're creating chances. That means you're, you're looking as if you're going to score. So it may have to go the whole road tonight, but uh, I'm quietly confident they'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. The, the one wee blessing that a lot is forgot about, to be fair, drowning our sorrows last week in the pub was uh, the fact that the away goals... Uh, don't count now, mm -hmm. of yeah. course, you know, so it's not as if you're thinking, oh, they've be lost a goal at home, we need to go there and do this and do that. If we, if we can sneak a one now, we'll get an extra time. I, yeah. I like the fact that there's no away goals now, Tam, I don't know about you. I, I like it as well because teams are more open now, you know, they don't sit in away from home or, or at home and they're scared of losing a goal. You know, away from home you go for it, home and away, but I, I fancy my little strongly tonight, and I don't talk, Tam doesn't want to hear that, he well, knows I'm a joiner, but... Yeah. Even money. Even I think that, yeah. you know, the last well, the last two home games Sligo have played, they've lost to Bala Town and they've lost to UCD, who are students, uh, at the bottom of the Irish League. So, I don't think they're a great side. I think that the fact that Motherwell played, got a game 90 minutes under their belt and our week's training is huge. I've been there myself. Well, you know what, there's a way I'd agree with Tam because one of the big criticisms for fans and for pundits and for a couple of ex-players that I heard uh, was the fact that Murrow had only two games going into that. One was a bounce game in Austria at training camp yep. and then a, a, a woeful pre-season friendly against Partick Thistle. So if you like, um, the very fact that we had only played a couple of games, you could say last week was another game under our belt mm -hmm. uh, to help sharpen us up. And I don't think anyone could sharpen you up better than losing one nil at home uh, to a part-time Irish team. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good luck to Murrow. Um, we'll discuss it in detail uh, tomorrow um, and hopefully they're in the hat. For the next round, uh, lots of people offering their opinion. Mark says uh, Mother will need to win, end off, and it's or it's the start of a long season ending in relegation. Uh, with that in mind, and I don't obviously it's very it's going difficult. To start a long season for Graham Alexander. <coughs> well, I was, I was going to say to you, that's, pressure's on him. That's the point. Do you think the pressure's Aye. on him? If Graham Alexander was was talking here to us privately, I, I, I spoke at length to him. At the probably since we last hooked up at the Player of the Year event um, last year. <laughs> Saying last year, it only seems a few short weeks ago. And you know, thank goodness we had get fifth in the league and then into Europe because after what was a poor season entertainment wise, and then and you've been there and done this, Peter Vati got them present that evening, packed out with my old fans uh, as we just after two, two, three hours after we'd been scud at six now. <coughs> you know? Yeah, so Graham Alexander <coughs> that night when I chatted to him, both on stage, but he was very candid with the model fans that are in, and then when we had a wee, a wee drink after the event, ah, he, he, he knew that there was a lot of times he was under pressure last year, and it might even have been that Ricky Lamy uh, kept him in a job last year because a late, late equaliser at Livingston. Uh, which meant that we went into the top six and ultimately Europe and we deprived uh, Livy uh, and, and really sliding doors moment as I keep calling that so there's no doubt about it we had a big big crowd there last week brilliant atmosphere the the young boys had done one of the great TIFO displays which was amazing you happy uh, they, with the pitch? they had all the pitches it's stunning it's mm -hmm. apps I mean that, and that wee slope fix that Tam will have played on many a time it's, it's absolutely so yeah there you go there, there's nothing you can blame from yeah. last week other than ourselves so needless to say that the, the booing uh, very early in the season you would think for to hear the, uh, an absolute crescendo of jeers and boos and everything but Graham Alexander knows he's under pressure but he could he could just wipe the, the slate clean tonight uh, where we went and get down to mere pressure even in uh, Sunday rather at St Mullen because St Mullen are under pressure so that puts you under pressure as well gone there and lo and behold we've got our ex Mullen manager in charge and he's taking about half a, yeah. a former Mullen player <coughs> well I was going to say to you if you were talking about three managers who obviously wanted desperate to get a good start to the season yep Stephen Robinson Graham Alexander Callum Davidson mm. um, almost certainly um, anyway uh, good luck to Mullen what about Hearts 
They've got a deal, Ruffy, Robbie Nielsen. Um, I think it's great for him and Lee McCulloch and Gordon Forrest um, because when you look at what they've achieved, not only winning the championship and coming up, finishing third last season into the Scottish Cup final as well. Yeah, I think Ann Budge uh, has saw what he's done for the club in the last two or three years. You know, he's united the, the supporters. They're all buying into what they're doing. And he was even getting criticism, wasn't he, in the championship before he went up? But yeah. he went up. You know, and he's produced the goods. They're now the third team. There's, there's no doubt about that. I think they'll be this year. I think they'll be the third team by a distance as well. I think they've they've signed very very well. They've got Shankland in there, Forest. You know, I I, I think they'll be the, the team, if not challenging Rangers and Celtic, but they'll be the ones you'll be keeping your eye on when they go to Tynecastle. You know how they're going to do. Yeah. Um. He, he reckons you can get Shankland back into the Scotland setup as well. I, I think if you can get supply to them, the way that the way they're set up. I'm going to go and see them against Ross County on Saturday. No surprise, Tam. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to nip through there and, and see them. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to play. He's got attack-minded players. Yeah, it be interesting to see how they line up. Obviously, Liam Boyce is there as well. You know, does he go with the two of them, Shankland and Boyce up front? I think that would be, be a good partnership. If you're getting plenty of crosses in the box, you'd fancy them to score goals. So, no, I, I totally agree. I think that Hearts you know, will, will be very difficult to, to, to budge from that uh, third position. You know, I think they've got a really strong squad. I think the other teams will be better. I think Hibs and Aberdeen are obviously going to be better than they were last season, both in the bottom six. So, I think uh, other teams will improve, but I think Hearts will still be third by. by isn't isn't it great that it's back though? Oh, well, even, it's even last week, we had, you know, we did a smashing day out with the boys in the afternoon. A few bevies, that nice yeah. wee meal. Was this uh, was this your, your mates? Or was this just people that you selected from the PLZ team on the, the night out <laughs> that, were, that were all waiting on? <laughs> oh, oh, we've, we've had that. <laughs> <laughs> it was only me and young uh, Kelly. Kelly could make it. That was it. Um, playing Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> just, just four nights. No, no, no. I actually totally forgot about it. I will see here on record when yes. we're on day in the show. So I was bottom of the league in the predictor um, last season. I noticed Hugh McDonald's put Mullow bottom in the league and his predictions for this yeah, year. Yeah, for the Friday, yeah. Which Absolutely. explains why yesterday I was doing it all in towers, loosening some roller coasters. Not a deep jump. But the, uh, aye, so um, we need to get it organised. Yeah. I said we would do it pre-season. It was very hard at the tail end of last year. Folk were going on holidays and it was play of the year nights and daddy, daddy, da. But aye, we'll get, we'll get that sorted. Well, one of the, one of the, another re the only reason I'm saying to you is one of the, the pundits on the team um, of all the pundits who come in uh, Monday to Friday, uh, one of them's clearly toiling, um, obviously looking for handouts um, and, and visiting various people because he put he put on the chat on our WhatsApp chat. <laughs> Is there, any, is there any, any chance of that date getting confirmed? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, ah. I thought he was going to have it the night and we'd save him the embarrassment of watching the well. Tonight, <laughs> you know. Oh, well, that'd be cool. What sort of grub do you prefer, Tom? Anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we'll get that sorted. That, that'll be good. Um, yeah, he's he's picked... Um, I'll tell you, we'll do it. I th I'll say it. I don't know why. But it's a fan of the punters that are watching yeah. us. I've been invited. Uh, I would, I would invite, if you wanted to do a competition, I would invite one out of my pocket, one lucky... Football show viewer. Well, I'll tell you one thing, that's a great gesture, but let's hang five. It's going to be a hefty barber. <laughs> he's he's alright, he's what, good for it. What a great gesture. Right, eh? That's a great gesture. gesture. Remember, by the Does way. Ruffy pick, pick it? If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ruffy might want to pick the competition winner. And the other thing about it with your man is if there's no. If there's no real interest, he just switches off and blanks people. You right. know what he's like. Well, it's, I can, it's going to be a Thursday night, right? So that's the day I'm in here. Right. means I can leave the bottle of come in and then right after the show, we'll head out somewhere. Okay, yes. that's a good All show. Right. Next yep. couple of weeks? Yeah, man, right. absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Tam, had, Tam, Tam, is, Tam is all over it like a rash. There's another four staff starting as well. <laughs> okay, um, we're going to talk about uh, some of the other teams and some of the other news uh, emerging out of them because the great thing about it, um, and I always like to mention this just to, to leather people early on, um, the one good thing about the football show is we address so many uh, of the clubs in the Premiership, delve into the Championship as well, so it's well worth um, giving us your opinion on your team. Um, uh, Tam, I, I was raving about Ed McGeady coming uh, to Hibs. I thought he'd be a great signing. I thought he would really contribute with assists. He's out for three months with a knee injury. It's a disaster for Hibs, to be honest. I think that him coming in the summer was a real marquee signing. Him, David Marshall. Hibs are signing a lot. They're taking a lot of punt on a lot of players, Hibs, let's be honest. They're signing a lot of boys at 19, 20 winning experience. 
they needed that wee bit of experience with McGeady and David Marshall and for him to be out so early, you know, is, is a disaster. You know, three months out. It, it, it looked as if he picked it up at the last game there. I seen him coming off, holding his knee. Um, I thought it might have just been, you know, something light, but you know, it's, it means that Hibs, for me, have got to get back into the market. They've got to get back into the market and get another wide man. Um, spoke about Mikey Johnson yesterday on the show. Yep. Available for loan, I think, from Celtic. I think he'd be absolutely perfect for Hibs. Um, so I think that that will be one that I think that, you know, Lee Johnson will be certainly taking a look at. Yeah. And you know the alarm bells are ringing when, you know, he, he, he was out mouthing off about the about the League Cup, you know, you think, oh, did Hibs get through? No, of course they didn't. Stephen Robinson mouthing off about mm. it. Did St Martin get through? No. And I agree with what I read the Tam and the, and the Daily Record that week, my second favourite column in that fine newspaper. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they shouldn't be making excuses. This should be like training session stuff yeah. for, for, for clubs like that getting into these groups, you know, and you look at the state of play with part-time teams who are trying to put... Uh, uh, teams together just now and boys that are also going to think about their work and maybe they're trying to squeeze in holidays when their kids are off school you know and here we've got clubs like Hibernian and St Mirren full time professional top flight clubs it should be going out and absolutely hosing some of these other teams so pressure's on them already but that's what makes the season tasty to start already with quite a few sugarly nails on managers doors it's brilliant yeah over and above that as well uh, Tam's uh, Tam started off well he's been throwing grenades um, right. Ruffy because yeah. obviously <coughs> obviously uh, Stephen Fletcher's agent's not happy he's had a wee dig back saying oh, really? Fletcher didn't, didn't want to go to Hibs oh, uh, this is that. just a nonsense story mm -hmm. um, that's great isn't it I love really? it when they're a, we had an agent last <coughs> season um, having a Go dig at, at Ali. Uh, Ali because she said it was a risk signing Aaron Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Obviously the agent didn't read the piece in its entirety. Um, no apology from him, just absolutely um, savaged Alison. Um, didn't expect an apology from him either. Um, and, and you're getting it in the teeth. I am. Um, but listen, at the end of the day, Stephen wanted to go to Hibs. Hibs had better options than they thought in the forward areas. It didn't happen, but... Yeah. No, I wish Stephen all the best. Um, I still think he's got a lot to offer. He's up at Dundee United now, and you know I didn't think that his agent was going to come out and say <laughs> he did want he did want to go to Hibs and he signed for Dundee United. So that's uh, a storm in a teacup. Um, but I wish Stephen all the best up at United. I think he'll do well at me. Absolutely. And uh, another great thing about it, Robin Tam will know this better than uh, most. In this game, uh, remember, you know, agents, managers, sometimes players speak with forked tongue. Um, <clears throat> and you don't necessarily believe the yeah. words that are coming out of their mouth, shall I say. Sometimes yeah. they're economical with the truth. Yeah. But as you know, I don't fall foul of many people, but I did fall foul of Neil Lennon uh, in, in our old days, and uh, my compadre called him a donkey. Yes, and, uh, which is not a nice thing to no, do. No, uh, and uh, I was obviously a wee bit worried about that because I was going to have to bump into Neil yeah. at some stage, and I went to a Celtic game, and... Uh, at half time, I proceeded to go to the toilet, and just as I went into the hallway, he came walking towards me. And my main, main, immediate reaction was, I'm getting it here. <laughs> and the wee man came walking right, I just mean him, came walking right at me. And just as he got me, I was waiting on him saying something, and he never and he walked by me about five yards, and he went, hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> 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 yeah, some some can take uh, the good form on it, some can't. Um, Greg John, who's an Aberdeen fan, who thinks, Ruffy, that we don't really know uh, and we don't really look about anything north of Strathclyde is his criticism. Greg's been on the last couple of days. He's slightly miffed because he thinks I've got it in for Aberdeen. Um, but he's obviously saying we don't know that much about Aberdeen because they've made some fantastic signings. They made some fantastic signings last season. Their manager gets sacked. Mm -hmm. um, and now um, Greg says, why would you think Aidan McGeady would be a great asset to Hibs? He's 36 and miles off it. Um, Aiden, I, I, that's it, easy said when you know no, he's out for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, give him a break. I thought yeah. that was an exciting signing. Uh, we, we, we keep talking about in this programme and others about how there's a lack of guys uh, 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 immediately get a buzz going inside the stadium when the ball lands at their feet. You know, those, those guys are dying. I mean, that's how we did a wee chat recently in the radio. It's probably in the back of the Sligo Rovers defeat. And, um, you know, Lee Griffiths still hasn't got a club. No, mm. I would take him in a flash at Motherwell. Yes. You'll maybe know better than me. Stam's 
Scott Allen. Has he got a club? No. Nope. Is he just floating about? You know, he, he even would. Like, is he still got a parent club as such? Yeah. Or is he a complete no, free no, agent? He's free he's free. Free. Right, there's another one. I would love Motherwell to go for him. There's two guys that know how to play football. I know they've, in their own ways, they've had their own controversies, whether it's been uh, game time in Scott Allen's case and then everything that surrounds Lee Griffiths. But, you know, I would, I would take the two of them in a flash. Uh, I, I think uh, Griffiths, if he does get a deal, it's going to be a game-by-game -game situation. I think you've got to keep him hungry. I think he's one of the ones where, you, as you said, you spoke about it yesterday, you give him money per goal. You know, every time he plays, he gets money. But the yeah, problem with that is you've got to play him. Yeah. He's got to go to a team where he's first yeah. choice. Aye. You can't have him sitting about with all, walking with about. All, with all due respect, when you look at the teams at the bottom end um, and how critical it's going to be, I would take a gamble on him on a game-by-game -game basis. Uh, the wee incentive, as Tam says, about the goals. Scott Allen, I cannot for the life of me work out the whole thing because I, I, I am I a big fan. I've always been a big fan. It's just his fitness and his health. I know, and his health, it's which is the worry. Mm -hmm. Which is the worry, you know, but he, he, Tam... So what's the he, health he, issue? Well, obviously that heart scare. Um, which, um, you know, at times I think that really would have curtailed his but surely that must be Surely that must be okay or else the, the yeah. experts would have told no, him I, that's that thing I, about I agree with you, Tom, but you never know. I mean, he's just not, he's not been able to get a regular 90 mm. minutes anywhere. So there's something that we maybe we don't know, but, you know, I, I hope he gets a team. I, I agree with you. If I was Muller, I'd bite the hand off because I think it's going to be absolutely critical. Lee Griffiths is in talks with a, teams, a team just now. Is there? Yeah, I don't know the team, but David yeah. Martindale came out today and said he's left. He was in training with Livingston, wasn't he? Yeah. And keeping fit, and he said, "No, Lee's left, and he's in talks with a club." Yeah. So well, it's, I think I, I think it's going to be interesting I to see. To Australia yesterday, so we'll wait and see how that pans out. Yeah. Okay. Um, Michael Crooks is not a Mikey Johnson fan. He says he'll be injured within the month. Um, I, I just get <laughs> I get the feeling from our feed that people are just grumpy and mad. <laughs> Some people haven't had a holiday and they just want to absolutely <laughs> cane everybody. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we're getting ready for the start of the season. Um, and a little bit of bad news for Aidan McGeady. I do hope, though, Ruffy, that we do get... Um, the VAR in as quickly as possible. The reason for that is I, I was reading that comment from um, yeah, Bobby Madden, obviously, clearly looking at the standard of referee in Scotland and he thought, well, Willie Collins regarded as the top referee and if he's not getting any progress, then I'm going to leave. And I think, I think the lack of big tournaments for mm -hmm. Willie Collum just was the writing on the wall for Bobby Madden to say, I've had enough, I'm going to go down to England. Yeah, and there, there obviously is a process for getting these big games, European games, and uh, it's dis it must be disappointing if you're an experienced referee, you know, and uh, up here and you're getting cup finals with Rangers and Celtic or Hearts or semi-finals, and then somebody above doesn't think you're good enough to get the bigger games. Yeah. I have noticed that there are a lot, a lot of young referees coming into the championship games now, yeah. you know, so and maybe they're doing something behind the scenes maybe not fast-tracking them as quick as what they used to, and that might be to let them get as much experience as possible. But it, it must be a, a real disappointment when you think you're at the top of your game in our league and you kind of get a European game. I think they should be doing more to get encourage ex-football players to become referees. I don't know what you know, the SFA, I think they should be training them up, you know, offering an incentive for ex-football players to go and try and be a referee. I know Sean Murdoch, goalkeeper, uh, I was at with Dunfermline at Hibs is now working his way up and I think he's working at the league football now he's under 40 but I think maybe you know players that have played the game and understand the game can make better decisions but can you imagine I don't, I don't think they fancy it Tan. no no, I, don't, I think they soon realise how difficult it is yep. they, they might change their entire perspective but bear in mind a lot of the referees of course have gone the other way guys that were decent players in their day Willie Young yep. uh, until he got a, an injury was uh, apparently a decent player there's quite a few of them um, I think Bobby might have played as well, but um, so I ah, you'd wonder if it would work the other way. But any of them that you ask, you just think, oh, I wouldn't fancy that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would they fall into the trap? And what team did you play for? Ah, and yeah. He obviously becomes a referee, a top yeah. referee. Yeah, that's a good point you as know, well. People Ruffy, start which... casting up what what teams they did play for. You yeah. know, no, I think it's a good point, Ruffy, because um, you know. Uh, once you get to a situation, especially in this country, um, you know, it doesn't matter what your background is, uh, there's always somebody who thinks you're going to be compromised. Um, although it's a good point from Robert Rowan who says Chris Sutton is a referee. <laughs> <laughs> a few red cards fired out oh, right away. In a minute. You know what? I was laughing yesterday. I don't know if you saw it online, but 
the minute Chris Sutton opens his mouth, there's always guys who they're like Sherlock Holmes. They forensically look <laughs> at everything that Chris Sutton had said in years gone by to be able to trip aye. him up. Yeah, he, he came on last night about Cristiano Ronaldo. Is it the same one you saw, Tom? I, 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 I think so. I don't know saying he's went away for him. Um, I thought Cristiano Ronaldo loved Man United, you know? Yeah. And then someday, about four seconds later, <laughs> straight on, I thought Chris Sutton said that he loved Celtic and it was an old report on the BBC Sport web page years ago obviously two <laughs> decades ago <laughs> i'm saying that he wants away from celtic before he went to birmingham yeah remember that yeah, so he doesn't stand a chance it was like the one when he slaughtered the model player the the, the legendary instant Two or three years ago now, when Mother played on, when we were meant to have been giving the ball back to Celtic. Like James Scott? It went up, James Scott, we went up the park and scored, yeah, right? Yeah. And Chris Sutton was doing his dinger. And then almost immediately, the clip appeared online of him doing it for Blackburn yeah. against Arsenal. <laughs> the exact same scenario. And you think you've got to be careful before Absolutely. you slaughter. Oh, listen, but the pundit, I mean, I like him. I, I, know, oh, him as, I, I, know, him as a, I know him as a guy as well. He did. He came to our launch of PLZ mm. Soccer roughly all those years ago. Um, I I got on great with him, um, but uh, obviously, you know, from a from a punditry point of view, he'll just he'll just laugh at that. I mean, he, it, uh, even if you pulled up the Celtic thing, uh, yeah. you know, the reason he wanted away from Celtic is <laughs> him and Strachan didn't get on. It's as simple as that. Um, there's always little caveats to all these stories, as you guys know. Um, but as we look forward to the season, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I hope that Scottish clubs can get into group stages as well as uh, Rangers and Celtic. Rangers have certainly, over the last two or three years, uh, been flying the flag uh, in a positive sense uh, for Scottish football. As we get ready for the start of the Premiership season, we're going to hear from Derek McInnes shortly as well. But as you mentioned there, Tam, I mean, it's 37 years since any club out with Celtic and Rangers won the league. When I was growing up as a, as a kid and watching the game and watching the teams play, you had a great heart side. Um, you know, Aberdeen, Dundee United, you could go to Pataudry and, and Tannadice and think, we're going to get cuffed here. It must have been great for, great for years back in the day, obviously it was well before my time, but to, to go and see like three or four teams competing to win the league. For my lifetime, it's always been Celtic Rangers yeah. competing. There's never been anybody else up there. But there were stars in the teams. I mean, Dundee United, Aberdeen used I to go and Strachan win the league. Joy to watch. Sturrock was a sensation. How how nobody in England, Ruffy, yeah. signed Paul Sturrock. I am gobsmacked. He mm. was unbelievable as a player. Yeah, he was just one of these strikers. You know, you just couldn't get a hold of. You know, you had to pull him down from behind. Uh, you know, Jim McLean always used to say that he stopped that tackling from behind. And I think basically he was the sort of a the profile of, of what it was doing to players, you know, because that's the only reason you could stop them, was just to have them. You can see as well when you say the dominance of Celtic and Rangers, Peter, you get a lot of folk then who immediately argue, aye, but when you look through all the leagues in Europe, there is only maybe two or three teams, but nowhere that long a period. No, no, exactly. if you exactly. to go in any league, Germany, Spain, France, Italy, wherever, if you want to go back 37 years from now, there'll be all sorts of teams that have been in the mix. Yeah. But up here, it's only been Celtic and Rangers. It's not freshening up. Absolutely, I agree with you, Tam, but it's a, that's a programme on its own. Uh, nevertheless, um, the start of the season will kick off with Livingston against Rangers at 12 noon. Uh, Rangers obviously now know, um, Tam, that <coughs> they're going to face either a Dynamo Kiev, a Sturm Graz, a Monaco or a PSV in these qualifying rounds because of the events of uh, last night. So there's four sides that they know they're going to have to get past. Yep, four decent sides, I think. I think Monaco and PSV obviously is the two that stand out, you know, bigger names than our two. But you know, I just think the way Rangers played last season uh, in their run to Europa League, I think they'll fancy, they'll fancy against any of the teams, you know, home and away, yeah. you know, the way they played, the way they've played in Europe in the last two or three years. You know, I know the pressure game, you know, that I think Mal was at Malmo that put them out, which was a shocker. But I think the bigger the name, I think the better for Rangers. It Do you takes think the they're pressure stronger off them or weaker? It's difficult to tell. You've not seen them in pre season. I tell you it's you difficult. Sure. I've yeah. need to see them. I've need to come back to me after six league games and see, yeah. would you think? But see, I think they'll, they'll probably be a bit Peter. stronger. Because, would you, would you, yeah. what is it if they, Celtic and Rangers, they both, there or thereabouts, got what, half a dozen new faces each? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, right? that's fair. So, again, you don't know until you, you never, I mean, you, these games, as much as they draw the crowds, which is great, and it's a chance maybe for fans to take their kids and all that and introduce them to the football, but, you know, uh, the Rangers and Celtic are recently playing like, you know, uh, West Ham and Norwich City and whoever else. They don't actually matter. It, it's a glamour yeah, right. version of the way Mullow used to play Hartlepool or Coventry, you know, and the, uh, the, the games matter not a jot until the real stuff uh, <coughs> begins in earnest this weekend. It'll be interesting to see 
of the Rangers and Celtic, the new sign is how many of them are in the, the 11? How many of them are actually ready-made in That's the 11? Right, yeah. You know, because if you, if you look at Rangers and Celtic, I think the Rangers and Celtic supporters <coughs> could nearly pick their best team, you know, with the size. All right, the Rangers have lost Aribo and Vasi, but I, I think it'd be interesting to see who's going to step up to take that 11 and both. It'll be interesting to see the team lines at the weekend. Put it that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Livingston against Rangers, although it, it should be a comfortable win for Rangers against Livingston because David Martindale thinks Rangers are phenomenal. He does. He's, 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 <laughs> David Martindale's been out of the Rangers game, I think, <laughs> pre-season, <laughs> watching them <laughs> for this game. Uh, so uh, uh, he'll be expecting uh, Livingston to pick up any points then. He thinks Rangers are that good. I'm not going to pick Livingston to get relegated, Tam, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. I, no. think, I think there's something about them. They've lost a couple of players that I think... You you know, I think Forrest going was a was a blow to them. Um, but you know, I, I'm not I'm not going to pick them just because there are two or three other clubs that I think I'm not I'm not impressed with the way they've done well, their business. As, as Tam said, they were very unlucky not to finish in the top six. I mean, bit of a freak goal, bit of a freak goal in the last minute for Mullow, Let's be honest, got them. Uh, but they'll pick up a lot of points at home against St Mun and Motherwell. They'll, they'll pick up a lot of points in that park. You know, and I think that's that's what. We'll, will ultimately save them for, for getting relegated. Yeah, um, OK, um, Livingston against Rangers. Um, I'm going to next through and see Hearts against Ross County, Ruffy, because for the first okay. season, in maybe seven or eight seasons, okay. you're not picking Ross County for the drop. No, I'm actually picking uh, Ross County to maybe break into the sixth place in the Premier League. What? What? You yeah. slaughtered them for two years. Yeah, but I think Malky. Get a Dingwall. No, no, get a Dingwall. No, I think yeah. Malky. <laughs> Roy McGregor's on the phone. Roy McGregor's, Roy McGregor's sponsoring you. No, no, at all. I just think Malky's uh, Malky's doing what Motherwell used to do, identifying players for England and bringing them up, Aye. and they're an instant hit. And he's bringing them up like five and six because we know what like Roy is. Roy will be saying, "Hey, bring in as many as you like." You know, and that's what he's doing. And the, the two or three that he had last year were quality. And again, he's brought in five or six. And he said he's no stop there. So if he keeps bringing the same quality, and I think they'll get away for the teams that you're talking about that are yeah. going to struggle. Uh, Jimmy Duff says Motherwell will get relegated, Peter. Um, everybody can throw in their opinion. That's the great thing about football, especially at the start. I always think you... I always think, and as Tam mentioned there, I think you've got to get to the end of August when the window shuts and you start to see, you know, you've had three or four games of seeing the way teams are playing. Um, I don't think Kilmarnock will be there, though. I've been well impressed. I think Derek McInnes is a is a good manager. He's fairly pragmatic about the way he goes yeah. about his business. I mean, A, they didn't bring uh, Derek into Kilmarnock to remain in the Championship, and uh, sure enough, he got them out of there. And they've all brought... Uh, Derek and uh, so they're teetering with relegation all the time. You know they'll have ambition there at uh, come on. And let's be honest, it was, was it still only about three short years that they were they finished uh, third. Yeah, uh, was it third Steve, or even Steve second? Yeah. Steve Clark. Steve Clark. Clark. Yeah. I, think I think it's four. Was it? I think it was, was it four. four? Aye, you know. So yeah. they'll, they'll, you know, and okay, a lot of fans I've witnessed it. Well, a lot of fans will disappear when the good times aren't there. But what that did p prove, uh, and it was only those few short years ago, that the Kelly fans are out there. So if Derek could get the team motoring, then uh, aye, there's a lot to look forward to there. I don't think they'll be in danger this year either. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't fancy their opening run. Even the commandant boss thinks it's going to be a, a tough one. Would have done anything to get these types of fixtures, so you've you've got to look forward to it and relish it and try and set about the task that everybody has to do at some point in the season. We've got glad we're at home, obviously being champions, and um, Dundee United coming here will be a tough game. It's Dundee United's first competitive game for the season, and obviously we've had a few in the League Cup. I think he's got the right attitude. You know, hey, we're here. Mm -hmm. We want we want these yeah. tough games in the in the Premiership. Yeah, I mean, I know you're saying that uh, you don't fancy them. I think they'll be down there. I don't think what? he's. I don't think he's strengthened enough. Uh, we played them in our in the Premier Sports there, and I, I, you might find this hard to believe, but we should have beat them quite easily. <laughs> uh, you that yeah, yeah. That's your yeah. catchphrase. And I'm we just played looking them off at the park. they've got they've brought in a lot of experience. They've brought in the boy Power. They've brought in your boy. Is it Donnelly? Hi, Liam Donnelly. Aye, brought in Liam Donnelly. Like him. Like yeah. the big goalkeeper, but he's injured just now. Kyle Lafferty will score goals in the Championship. I'm not too sure about the Premiership, against the top Premiership teams. And they've got Ollie Shaw there, who is in and out. Wee Burke, retired. 
I just he keeps saying he's going to sign two or three players, so I'll reserve judgment to I see who the two or three players are. Yeah, well, one man who's actually continuing to sign um, players is Jack Ross, um, and today Azi Behek uh, is uh, a man who's come in on a two-year deal. Thirty-one-year-old, he's raving about him as well. He's absolutely uh, delighted that he's managed to get him. Um, he's got fifty-two caps for Australia, so he's clearly got a bit of experience. Yeah, and we spoke about it the other day, there seems to be quite an influx of Australian players coming around and McGowan up to back to St Johnston as well. So yeah. there is there is Australian that, that seems to be a market that a lot of Scottish clubs are looking at now and as I said, fifty two caps for Australia experienced players and they've signed a few few experienced players. I think down the end they'll be good this year. I think they've got a real good blend of promising young players. You know, Dylan Levitt coming back up's a great sign as well. Stephen Fletcher, Charlie Mulgrew. You know, and, and, a, and a, a real legs in the middle of the park and up front. So I think that, and Jack Ross for me is a good manager. So I think Dunnett will finish in top six. Yeah, you yep, got, yeah, you I think. Got, I think you got that in your one to twelve. Yeah, Dunnett in the top six for me. Yep, this season. Yeah, just a, a wee quick one before I get the other guys' thoughts on this. Um, does the captaincy matter at clubs these days? I noticed that Hibs have changed the captain. It's David Marshall. I don't think so. I don't think it really matters that much. I think, you know, this old cliche, they should have 11 captains on the pitch, you know, and it should be, obviously they've got to have a captain. Uh, David Marshall is the captain. Paul Hanlon, for me, is is, is a guy who's picked, starting to pick up injuries at the tail end of his career. He's, he's missed a lot of last season as well, so I think that's probably been the, you know, the deciding factor that Marshall's got the captaincy. A lot of supporters were thinking about Ryan Portis as well, maybe, but he's not, yeah. he's not signed a new deal yet. He could be Ofsky, so... I think as a lot of people argue to like their captain in the middle of the park. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. If you watch David Marshall against Czech Republic, that's yeah, where he was. He was in the middle of the park. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 think, I think there are some characters that you know, epitomise what a captain's all about. You know, it's a, it is a Roy Keane. It's a, you know, it's a John Gregg. It's a Billy. You don't Mignon. get them anymore, didn't you? Know, really? Well, do you? Yeah, but you, don't, you, don't get you don't. You don't have to just be a captain on the park. You need to be a captain off the park. Well, there's, you, need, there's, you need to be walking about the dressing room, getting the respect for everybody else. But I agree with you. I, I think a captain should be a Scott Brown. Yeah. You know, somebody who's going to be, and you're, you're not frightened of them, but you know, if you get that look, you know. Is there you a need to buck up your ideas. Is there a John McGinn? Stephen Gerrard's just made him Aston Villa captain. Yeah, well, I, I don't know John McGinn personally. I don't know if he's got that in him, that sort of a fiery thing in him. I just, I just think sometimes it's always the Scott Brown or you think maybe the best player. The best player's the captain. But they've got to bring something to the game rather than just on the park. Yeah. It's got to be off the park as well. And sometimes, um, forgive me, I can't remember who it was, but there was somebody in the not too distant past at Mullable, I've got the name in a minute, who was captain, and he asked to be relieved of the captain's duties because he it's thought it was shift. putting him off his game. Well, it's a big shift. Um, yeah. I'll come back to me before the end yeah. of the show. Ian Noble sums it all up. He says, Willie Miller, proper captain. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Willie was a great player, led by example as well, and, and drove Aberdeen on. Um, I that's what he called his fish and chip restaurant, and Aberdeen was captains. Yeah. And that sounds quite clever, because you think captain in terms of captain of the club, and you can yep. still see that iconic image, yeah, yep. 1983, and then captain because the captain of a trawler yeah catches the fish uh -huh. but it was almost a bit too subtle and needless to say it went bust yeah and i remember no i did i remember <laughs> saying to, no i remember saying <laughs> to Willie at the time how can you ever think you opening anything in aberdeen it just doesn't record a willy mullers yeah with a picture of you and a picture of the cup winner's cup you know yeah. it's crazy yeah absolutely but that's, you need to have a wee bit about you skippers <laughs> yeah. sorry it was called skippers, skippers same uh, height yeah. right, skippers with the boat and he was a skipper could yeah. have been captain, yeah, captain absolutely. Absolutely. I, mean, I think sunk. you need to have a special kind of <laughs> bravado to, to start putting your photograph up in your own <laughs> shop <laughs> you need to have a fairly <laughs> large ego I think to do that yeah absolutely um, it's not like that no, no, it's no. Not, you're not getting ego no um, anyway <laughs> on you go <laughs> that'll not get out <laughs> uh, thanks to uh, a lot of people who have mentioned there that, that it was in fact called uh, skippers so um, simple as that who's um, the most egotistical you've ever met in your football career uh, Stevie Archibald was it eh? oh, yeah I, I, listen you don't bad he's changed now don't yeah, bad mouth him he's we had changed. a great yeah, weekend super. with him completely changed from now being more experienced and wise but when he played <sighs> it was uh, one of the guys you'd, you'd, you'd find difficult going out for a pint uh, I like the more down to earth guys you're all PLZ pal Gordon Smith I mean, Tim said to me once that when he dies, he'd like the word humble put on his statue. 
<laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. Um, I, 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 th- I, I think it takes a special kit. There's not too much. Somebody asked me, you know, is there ever a footballer that you didn't like? You know, that you were interviewing, you just thought, hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. I think it's because we love the game. There's there's very few people that, you know, we've. Think of the guests we've had on. Think of the guests you've had on your show. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we're talking about footballers. You just have movie stars. But if you're thinking of guests who are footballers, mm-hmm. we, you know, there's. There's very few that have come in. I can't well, even most think of them. One. If they said, "Come on, we'll go out for a pint or something to eat," exactly. you would go yeah. brilliant, yeah, fantastic. And there was there are some out there you would go. Well, well, I think I think Roy Keane would be terrified to go with. No, I like oh, I think, Keith I Lasley think. was great. I, like, Keith, I, like I mean, Keith it, it does sound oh. very Scottish, and it sounds good. We have a drink problem, my son. But that's the sign I've always said about uh, producers on my radio show down through the year. I like the fact that everyone, bar none. I would have been quite happy going out for a pint with. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's somehow, that's just sometimes the barometer, uh, how you see folk, you know, because there's nothing worse if there is some, I just, I just can't stand this guy, he's got a big hat for himself. He's yeah. Like, oh. I like Kenny. We had Kenny on yes. two or three times on the show. Kenny who? Douglas. Yeah. And he's part. Was it Kenny? It's, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's, <laughs> you may know who Kenny is. Uh, uh, Kenny Brannigan, who's the one about? There's only one Kenny. Kenny. Um, He's yeah. good fun, good drive, good fun. Good yep. dry sense of humour yep. as well. Super, brilliant. Um, and, and Keynes in hands it out. Carol McHugh. Carol McHugh, who scored the perler. Mind the crack of the goat was in the cup against Hearts at Fur Park. Right. For the edge oh, of the box, an absolute yeah, breaker. It's Carol McHugh. He thought it was putting him off his game. Yeah. And he was doing well for Mother at the time. And I thought, that took a big guy. That's, that's certainly a guy that didn't have an ego. Yeah. And he said, look... Take that off me. I'm, I'm, I just want to concentrate on the game. The game, that yeah. was good. Right. Well, well done, Look at that. Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl, well done, Cheryl. Our uh, digital uh, journalist uh, is always on it. Uh, James has mentioned uh, Barry Ferguson, great captain. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with him. Uh, um, Barry um, was one of those people. Oh, he had that stare. Well, he had that stare as well. He yeah, had absolutely. that, you know, I'm not getting beat here. You know, and if I'm not getting beat, you better think you're not getting beat either. You know, and that... that yeah, you know, puts it and He's Richard a, Goff was like that as Goff well. Like, he, he, Barry's one of those ones you want. You, you take him in the trenches with you. Yeah. Obviously, you wouldn't nowadays because he's a badge kisser. He kissed the badge and then bolted. There's no use us fudging it with him. Eh? No, no, he's even to pass his new, didn't he? But that, <laughs> it just shows you, you you can have a an inkling or an idea of somebody on the pitch. You know, you can have a, a you know, and Barry Ferguson for me on the pitch. I hated him. I hated playing against him. Yeah. Oh, and then obviously it's after working with him here. Yeah. And good couldn't, have been, couldn't have been nicer, great guy, yeah. great guy, good, good person and all. Are you, um, obviously St Mirren Mother was going to be on the, the Sunday, Ruffy, because of the, the Europa Conference game, but um, Celtic Aberdeen is a strange kick-off for them, half past four. Yeah, I think uh, the Rangers owner was wanting something at 11 o'clock at night, but you know, they weren't like going, going with that. Yeah, where, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you? The owner, the American owner, was wanting a game at 11 at night. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, uh, if there was an... Would you fancy that as a supporter? Um, no, in Spain. You know what, no, maybe you no a, 11, maybe If it's nine, bringing you in a million, nine. of course. Exactly. You if, kick if, off exactly. any um, Aye, I've, I've said before, I would do anything to get the money on it. Motherwell, if these mad notions about somebody buying the rights to your stadium and renaming it, bring it on. If the money was good enough, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, caught the, the stadium. PLZ. Fans would still know it. PLZ Fans stadium. would still know it's for a park, and we'd happily take the PLZ money. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> would, would you be happy if we, we sponsored uh, for a park and it was the PLZ Soccer Stadium, would you? Yes. Would you mention it on BBC? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I take, they would take the money. It's just, I'm the same. I, 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 I'm 53 now, and when it comes to looking at the bigger picture at your club, I know the St Myrne fans had their vote about uh, whether or not to give Celtic Rangers punters extra seats. Yeah. They voted against it. I'm sorry, every fan's entitled to their opinion, but if I thought my club was getting extra money through me viewing a couple of games a season for a different seat, I, I would, I would get up my seat. No, absolutely. Um, so Celtic Aberdeen. Uh, is half past four on the Sunday. I'm Wait a minute, it. Peter, that overlaps. What, what, what about all these rules that we used to have that you couldn't have no. games clashing and all the rest of it? Absolutely not. Because the St Mirren Motherwell game won't be finished uh, at the earliest quarter to five, yeah. and that's been allowed to kick off at half four. Nobody cares now. The whole thing's games are bogey. I mean, there was a situation where you couldn't actually have another game. Do you remember you couldn't have another game live when there was a Champions League match? Yeah. On? yeah. All of that's gone mm-hmm. out the window if, as well. And that back in Lee Jim Farry's day, and for a lot of reasons, folk. 
you know, if we could exhume the body or bring back the ghost of Jim Farry, we would do it because you're absolutely right. If um, our, you know, if Albion Rovers were playing East Stirlingshire on a Wednesday night, a rearranged game that had been postponed over the winter, and they were trying to put on Real Madrid against uh, Barcelona, same night, Champions League, Jim Farry would have got that abandoned for the TV screen, see they get it scrapped, mm -hmm. yeah. so that game could go in the 250 fans turn up. Absolutely. Strange Cal days. Callum McGregor, the captain of Celtic, a nice little touch, they usually ask a celebrity or someone with an association with Celtic um, to unfurl the flag, but it's Callum McGregor is the man who's going to be up there as a captain, and he has mentioned, listen, great, I'm so honoured, that my family will be there, I'll unfurl the flag, but after the flag is unfurled, forget about last season, game on. Yeah, I think that's what the best clubs and the most successful teams do. You know, they, they start from zero again. Alec Ferguson was great at that, Man United. You know, every season, you know, start from zero. Everything to prove. You know, you've got to go and prove yourself again. You don't rest in your laurels. And I think I think Celtic are the same. And Carl McGregor, we're talking about captains. I think he's been a, a great captain for Celtic as well. Totally different from Scott Brown. You know, Scott Brown was a snarling presence in the middle of the park. You know, that skinhead. And, you know, he kind of led by example. He fired players up and... For Callum McGregor just has just led by his performances all season, consistency every week, seven or eight out of ten, never injured. You know, always played with a mask on. You know, I think he's still got that mask. Yeah. I think he quite likes that mask. I don't think he's going to take that off. But a tremendous captain for Celtic, and listen, he, he could go and eclipse Scott Brown. You know, in terms of trophies won at Celtic. You know, he's I don't know how many he's got Callum McGregor now, but you still get plenty of time to get plenty more. Yeah, Tam, obviously this is your first programme back. You've you've had a wee holiday. Um, have you picked your 1-12? to 12? Did you, Yes. Who did you pick to win I, the league? I, I'll be honest with you as well. I, I, I didn't sit there um, like I was, you know, having a go at the Enigma code or anything like that. Yeah. And I stuck some teams down. I think the top six is a wee bit self-explanatory this year. It certainly looks like it on paper. Yep. But as we keep saying, a ball hasn't <clears> been kicked yet, really. Uh, I believe I may have put St Murren. Bottom. Relegated? I, I think. I may have. Yeah. Um, I've put yeah. St Johnson. You know, yeah. mate won't be happy with me. But no, they've been howling. They have been. They've been really really. They get booed on to the park last week. <laughs> and uh, no, this early in the season, they get booed on. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, the St Johnson fans aren't happy at all. And again, there's absolutely no doubt, Callum. I, I remember saying it at the time, you know, the worst thing Callum maybe could have done at a club at St Johnson is win a cup double. Where, where do you go after that? And then stay on the next season. St Johnston, you yeah. know? It's, it's, you know, fans are, fans are a funny, funny bunch. But again, we were, you know, the game that I bloody keep mentioning, keep mentioning, because it's the only thing I've seen my team win. But, um, you know, two seasons after the 91 Cup final, Motherwell fans, myself included, we were all flaming, you told me as well. Yeah. You know, two Absolutely. years after seeing a final like that. Steve McNamara says, I think Hearts will struggle um, because they've got Europe as well. Um, Stephen, I'm not going to knock you for your opinion on it. I, I can't see it myself. I just think they've got. I just think they've got players that are going to excite um, this season. I'm really, I'm well pleased for Robbie Nielsen getting his deal, but I, I think they've got players that are going to uh, excite the fans. And, and I like Tynecastle as a ground. Um, Ruffy, I did ask you at the. Who did you? Who, who have you got to win it? Um, I think it's Celtic. You've got Celtic it to win one it. Of them. Aye. Yeah, I, I know you could fan the flames here right away. Yeah, but so. aye, it was a spin of the coin for me. I think it's, it might have been Rangers. We'll need Cheryl again to tell us. Yeah. I honestly, because if you recall, uh, when it all uh, suddenly got taken a bit too seriously a couple of years ago, when I had Livingston bottom, I think it was my first year doing this. Yeah. And it was only, and the reason it was Lovey Tam, see when I texted Peter and my teams, I'd done them all and I thought, I'm I'm just and I just thought, <laughs> do I, I, I give back? Bang, how was that? Yeah. There you go, I was probably doing something, you know, else. Well, I, I, I got it wrong last year on both counts. I picked Livingston to get relegated and Rangers to win the league. So, um, yeah, I fancied Rangers strongly last season to win yeah. the league. But again, that was before a ball was kicked. You know, just the shambles at Celtic were. They were beginning the last season. I think they lost three of the first six league games and they were starting a, a long time. And that's not going to happen this season. He's got a far more strength and depth. He's been in the door. You know, he's got a strong squad of players, so I think Celtic Rangers will both start the season, you know, and it'll be very, very difficult to take points off them. Yeah, um, uh, Tam Cowes the only one to pick Rangers. Well, I picked Rangers, didn't yeah. I? Right, yeah, there go, so. so there you are. Um, it was a toss of the coin. Um, Double-headed one, may I add, but nevertheless. <laughs> um, uh, let's look at those ten I asked you for, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. um, ten number sevens. I was looking Whoa. at I was looking at the whole Ronaldo saga that was okay. going on, and I was thinking to myself, I wonder who are the best number sevens to play 
on these shores in the UK. I've put together 10, and I wonder if um, if you can come up with... Um, well, you obviously you've mentioned Ronaldo. Yeah. I'd probably I've got him as number one. David Beckham. Yeah. Uh, Zidane? Was Zidane a seven? No. He wasn't even in the UK. It's no, I thought, no, sorry, I thought you said... Players that have played in the UK. Um, a number seven. George Best. George Best. Yeah. Got a, I can't believe it. Jinky. Yep, definitely. Um, if you're going to throw you Jinky in there, I know it's a thing, but we Willie Henderson. I, I like to be Willie Henderson. No. I know he's not going to be up there in your yeah. your thing, me. Uh, I'm wish. I'm, thank you. Who? Um, who? <laughs> <laughs> Any who? I'm giving, I, I mean, in modern times, Ruffy, I think because of the achievements of people, Tam. Mm -hmm. Throw in a few. Uh, well, there's only one for me. I mean, he does himself down in his after dinner like, but he was one of my first heroes at Motherwell, Johnny Gagan. Brilliant number seven, great yeah. right winger. I mean, only spent far too much of his career on the bench, but aye, I've got, I, I, I can still love watching clips of Johnny on YouTube. Uh, and when it, it, that brings the memories back, the, you'll have yeah. seen the new Motherwell strip that yeah. we've got which is uh, 40 years, uh, looking back to a strip 40 years ago. Yeah. There's some great clips in Motherwell. When, I when thought you were going to say David Cooper. David Cooper no, seven. 11. David Cooper, well, played, 11. David Cooper played seven sometimes and Aye, 11. But he, Tom's he, just he, going away Cantona. What? Cantona? Or yeah. put the collar <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, listen. I, I, I mean, there's no point in looking at him. He's got about two or three in his head. Cantona is a definite. <clears> I've, I've got two, right, I've Ryan got, Taylor said Suarez and I'm agreeing yeah. with I, I've got two yeah. left field ones. Go on. Matt Letizia. I was going to say Letizia there. Uh, and brilliant. another one, go on, people, well, maybe, uh, I loved them growing up, Giorgio Concladze at Man City, was a number seven. Yeah, that's a good shoot, Tom, I haven't heard that name, but no, um, in the top <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at, I've looked what, at, brought this one, by the way, because I just, numbers is such a thing oh, in the past. I was, looking at, I was looking at Ronaldo, and, and, and the whole debacle about, right, is he right, going to stay, right. is he going to go, and I thought, you know, he is the ultimate for me, the number one number seven that's ever played in this country. Right. Well, guess um, the other ones, but don't tell us who they are, just tell us what well, teams uh, they played for. Well, I've got, I've got Ronaldo at number one, I've got Doug Leash. Um, at number two, um, I've got George Best at three. Um, I've, I, I, and I can't remember the rest of them because I've got Henry it on the other computer. Henrik Larson's there, Doug Leash is there, um, Eric Cantona is almost certainly there, Luis Suarez, Kevin Keegan for me, yeah. um, because Keegan was European Footballer of the Year. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's he's an absolute stonewall certainty. I'll go with Tam as well. Well, Matt Latissi is another yeah. one that you can just put mm. his name on YouTube and enjoy mm. yourself yeah. for a good 20 minutes watching his goals. Beckham. Quite incredible. Yeah. yeah, Beckham's definitely Beckham's. Beckham was world class for, at one point for me. Yeah, I, I remember one game for England. I think it was against Greece in a qualifying game. We single-handedly won that game. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that you, you, you know. Scored a free kick that damaged mm -hmm. our hopes. Did it? I think it was, was that. Was the free kick against Greece? It yeah, Greece. Like the ninety odd minutes. Yeah, Greece. That that I'm got them sure through. That got some, England through. Is that what it was? Yeah, it got England through. It was a, an, an unbelievable free well, kick. I remember and I thought it was one of the best things ever did. I wish I had a clip yet with Mark Latissi. We had him in the old telly show years ago and uh, we heard he was good at uh, golf as well. And, as you know, a number yeah. of footballers are great golfers. I think primarily, who would it be, Alan Hansen maybe? Yep. We could have gone pro. But so, Cut a long story short, look, we got Mark Letissi doing on camera, and this must take some doing. And we'd eventually tell him to stop, right, that's enough, that's enough, you know. Um, he, he kept the mitre ball, size five mitre up with his left foot. Well, on his right foot, he had a golf club, and he was playing keep up with a golf ball. That takes, <laughs> that he just takes kept, some He just kept doing it, and I thought, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think all of those players that were mentioned, Cantona, certainly up there, um, Matt Letizia is an argument for him in the top ten. It was just one of those ones. You know how you like a wee pint at a pub, <coughs> uh, and we'll have that probably when when we go out for that meal when we when we all get going. Uh, interestingly enough, um, I watched it last night. I'm going to mention it, Ruffy, um, because we're all looking forward to the start of the new season. But the feed we're getting a football at the moment. Germany methodical. Straightforward defeat France and they're playing England in the final of the Euro 2020. The, the women's game, same, same style as the men, you know, absolutely strong, it's like clones, the big center forward, you know, yeah, pop, pop. Oh, I mean, as like clones, they get the, the who was the coach in the German team could have been Jurgen Klinsmann's twin sister, yeah, you know, uncanny, yeah. you know what I mean, but um, yeah, that was what's the betting in the final, do you know? 
England will be favourites. A bit of a real shame if, you if Germany you think, won in penalties. Do you say you think England will be favourites? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I think. And I'm a big safety. You know what it's like, Peter, when you become a dad and all that. Yeah. For them to get that with your lassie. I uh, know, I mentioned that last night on Twitter. Oh, I just thought it was brilliant. It was a little girl. It endeared me that much to Ian Wright. You know, when he got involved in it as well. And that the girl was dancing. Uh, yes. She was dancing. So, so we got Caroline. two tickets for the final, which I thought was a great move by the BBC to get her on the news. And then, obviously, she didn't realise that they were filming her. And it was absolutely fantastic. So, great. I mean, she's going to be there with her pal. Maybe her mum, maybe her granny. But it's going to be great. It'll be a great occasion. I, I still think Germany will win it. Um, and that's not just a, the noise up from the, the Scottish mm-hmm. perspective. I'm going for Germany. You going for England? No, I'm going for well, Germany. Well, I'm going for the Germans. Come on. Yeah. Germany, Germany for you. Germany penalties. The best noise up was the <laughs> Scottish guy <laughs> done up as the Swedish guy. That's fantastic. <laughs> it was a wee, it was a wee. I know, because you always get folk that. What part of England do you think? I know. If you go with the old anyone but England, right, there's a lot of folk get a bit of a down for saying that now. Even back in the day, Andy Murray got it as well. You know, they were making them out to be better and all that. But wow, to get, up, to get dressed up like that. <laughs> and go and support England's opponents. I mean, that's quite incredible. Ruffy, you were supporting Sweden the whole way through, weren't you? Yeah, I thought they were good. Yeah, I thought they were, uh, yeah. I thought they were excellent, technically, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah I, uh, after, uh, after the ball um, mm-hmm. kicked off, you turned it off. <laughs> um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, you can give us your opinion on it. Quite a lot of people think um, that it's going to be England's day at Wembley again, the women's game replicating what happened all those years ago. What was the year again? 1966 for the men. Is it going to be 2022 for the women in Euro 2022 uh, final at Wembley on Sunday? Uh, anyway, don't forget, um, coming up over the course of the season, we're going to be giving away lots of prizes. We're going to be uh, offering you the chance to get involved in a lot of fun that we are going to be Uh, producing on PLZ Soccer. There's big things happening. I'm delighted that we've got our pundits back with us, uh, joining us for a new season. Uh, You can offer us your opinion. You can subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe or hit the bell. Uh, And if you download the app, you'll get all the breaking news as well. Um, So, fingers crossed, tomorrow on the programme, we'll be talking about Motherwell overturning that deficit. We'll know by then. Right, I'll I'll sit out of this just as you wrap the show up, but give give me a scoreline prediction. Make me feel good. I I think Motherwell will win. I don't know how they'll win, but I think they'll win. We'll go through. We'll go through. Ah, Okay. Remember, by the way, by the time this programme goes out and people have listened and watched for an hour, and then you're going to look mightily silly about nine o'clock oh, if it all goes. Oh well, nobody the, the first time. Yeah, okay. Fancy yeah. Motherwell strongly. Three one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two and a half, three nil to Motherwell. Okay, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. there you are. Three one Motherwell. Uh, um, fancy uh, they will. Let's. Uh, but let's like, in horse racing terms, will come on for the run. Yeah. Okay. There you are. Thanks for that, Tam. Uh, thanks to Tammy Manis. Thanks to <laughs> Tam Cowan. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, Alan Ruff. Uh, we are pondering the possibility of inviting someone. That's such a great gesture from Tam. Uh, we'll, oh, yeah. pon- we'll have a discussion about it. Should we invite one pundit to come out for the end of the season, uh, the predictor yeah. meal? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? But they'll have to send in a photo or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you are. Welcome to Ruffy's world. Fantastic. Uh, thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow if you can at four.